Hello, amazing one, and welcome back to the Sassy CEO podcast. I'm Paula Bailey, your host, and in today's episode, we are speaking to the amazing Sassy CEO, Kelly Sanders, who is the founder and creator of Women in Fitness brand. So this business is all about helping women in fitness grow their businesses so they can do amazing things for their families and their communities. She's an epic woman. And it has been a pleasure to watch her go from growing a business to just, you know, be able to push past the six figure mark to then being able to scale out to half a million dollars a year um, whilst still raising kids and doing all that amazing stuff that women also do in life. Now, what I find really interesting is the evolution of, of Cal and her ability to let things go and start to delegate out. And in particular, 12 months ago, delegating out her sales and her sales process, I was helped her to actually create um, the processes and the systems for her sales team to really come in. But it's really fascinating to hear her take on what she did for herself and the work that she was doing in terms of her mindset and her ability to step up into that space so that she could really let things go and what that actually did for her business and her revenue. So if you are in business and you're looking to sort of look at that next level of delegating out, letting other people take things off your plate so that you can really sit in your zone of genius, this is the episode for you. Don't forget, if you'd like to set up your own Sassy CEO strategic plan and you want the template for it, head over to sassyceo.com.au forward slash gift and grab yourself the download, which is the template for setting up your strategic plan. But without any further ado, let's just jump straight into the episode with Kelly Sanders. Welcome, Kelly Sanders. It's so exciting to have you, or Kel, as I love to call you. <laughs> Thanks, Thank honey. you so much for being here. So good to be here. So amazing. Just for the listeners' sake, because I mean, we, Kel and I could just get straight into talking, and um, we have known each other for a very long time. So I think it's really important to set the scene for you so that you can catch up and be up to speed as a listener. Kel and I met quite a few years ago in a mastermind that we we're in, you know, working you know, together and with other amazing women on growing our businesses, you know, in that elusive stage of growing your business, trying to get past that, that six figure mark that everyone wants to get past when they magical first, figure. yeah, that <laughs> magical figure when they first get started. And, um, you know, for many years, we've had amazing conversations on business, life, kids, um, personal development, spirituality. It's evolved as the years have gone on. And every time we have this like, ah, oh, which is almost every week. This is an amazing conversation. I always think to myself, I should be recording this. And, you know, for anyone who's been listening to this podcast, you know, that's probably one of the main reasons why I finally pulled my finger out of my bum and finally said, I'm going to do this because there was just too many conversations, juicy conversations that were happening that I felt were, it was almost a travesty that it wasn't getting shared. So this is the beginning of actually us recording conversations and letting you are in on the inside of the inner sanctums of some of the conversations that go on for us so that you can also take something away and hopefully apply it to your business or your life. So this is super exciting. And one of the number one things that I've really loved watching in your evolution, Cal, is your ability to let go and how you've, I mean, I know there's been lots of conversations for us you know, in terms of your growth and it, it doesn't just happen. Let's just put it that way. So anyone out there, it's not like someone just wakes up one day and says, I'm going to just let that go. It is obviously an evolution, but it's been a, a real joy to watch you go from, yeah, just creating that first six figures to um, scaling out to sort of like the, the business that you have today, sitting at about the half a million dollar mark and, progressively letting more and more go so that you truly sit in your genius, which is the true, you know, definition of being a sassy CEO in my book is that ability to be in flow, to, to do the thing that you're here to do and have people around you to work with you so that you can take your mission out to the world to make the world a better place. So let's actually talk about that. Like what Sounds does it good. take to get there? You know, maybe let's just start off with you actually telling everyone what this amazing business is. That would be a good start, wouldn't it? A good start. Yeah. <laughs> so they know what you actually do and they can place yes. you. 
Yes. Yeah, so I help women in fitness to grow their fitness businesses. And that evolved from me being in the fitness industry from 20 years ago. So when I was teaching at a local fitness college, I could just see a really huge calling for people and personal trainings, personal trainers and fitness businesses needing help to grow their business. And having done that process and been through the journey myself, it was just like, of course I can help you. So, and like you said before, you know, it's just evolved and grown from there to what it is today. So yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I love it. I love the story. I mean, Kelly is probably one of the most humble, amazing women. She's not that person who's going to, you know, toot her own horn. So I'm going to do a little bit for her (laughs) today just to help her out. But one of my favorite and most impactful stories that Kel, and I haven't told you that I'm actually going to tell this. So watch out, Kel, I love you. But um, (laughs) I remember sitting in a room, we were um, at an event because we're constantly investing in our own growth and development. We don't ask anyone in our clientele to do anything that we're not prepared to do ourselves. But she was telling me about what it was like when she, you know, was first sort of raising her kids, starting her business. I think she was starting out life um, as a newly single mum, you know, and the the complexities of that, the complexities of having two young children, but still saying, no, I see this as an opportunity. I see this here. I mean, that's incredible strength Mm. because a lot of people, and that's okay, but, you know, it could be so easy to go back into the, I can't do this because I've got kids. And, you know, what, what was that like for you? I look back now and I think I've said this to you. I look back now and think, oh my God, what did I do? Like, what was I thinking? But there was no other choice. Like it was for me, there was no other choice. It was just, you were going to make this happen. So that belief just really shone through. And I, you know, I think it's because too, I know, that what I've learned on this journey is so valuable that it can also impact so many women's lives. And, you know, I chose women in fitness from our mentor, you know, diving deep is because, you know, being a mom, I get it. I get what it's like to have to juggle family life and business, but also too taking time out for self care because we are the most important person. And so there's so much value in that my journey of what I've been through, like they say, you message your message. So that mess I went through is able now to really help women because, you know, when it comes to families and women, they like to have that freedom to do what they want when they want and, you know, have some purpose to their own lives, but, you know, with helping their fitness people as well by changing their lives. And so just me going through that journey has really inspired so many other women to, to do it themselves because we've all been brought up. Lots of us have been brought up in this scarcity and lack mentality. And I want to completely yep. change that because, you know, it, you it know. doesn't have to be like that. And, nope. you know, I wanted to make that change for my children as well to live in this abundance. And yeah, that's what's been such a, a beautiful journey for me. And yeah, like I said, I look back and go, oh my God, what was I thinking? But yeah, there was just yeah. no other option. And I just made it work. There yeah. was no help. I just made it work. And I think that's a that's such a an important lesson for us to see how many times in our life when we just jump and we just don't have any other options. It's like that true belief and that faith. Yes. And in retrospect, you might go, God, that was a bit crazy. Like I know yeah. I felt completely crazy when I left a very well established career great income to just do what I wasn't even quite sure. I just knew that it had to be something else. And for me, for me, it was actually also paving the way so that I could accommodate having children in the way that I wanted to have children. But then, you know, as everyone knows, when you do have them, it can add a layer of extra fear because you're obviously now protecting someone else. And I think I was really grateful when you shared that story because I've used that every day for the last year to remind me, and I'm not by any means on my own. I've got a beautiful network of family and friends around me. And my son is very blessed to have such amazing humans in his life. It's just that reminder that we can do anything and we just decide for ourselves. It's that choice piece, isn't it? The I can choose to to decide how my life will roll or I can be on the other end in that sort of lack end of the stick. I like to call it where you're like the victim and you know, everything's happening to you Mm -hmm. and, you know, you have no control. So I think that's a really, it's a really interesting and very, very important part of the equation. Don't you think Mm, that true belief? And I just want to add something into that is, you know, I was just sharing with clients before about, um, you know, the fear and the worry, like as women, it's, it's very prevalent for us to feel that way and that anxiety. 
it never goes away, but it's learning how to just deal with that and still choosing, like you said, that I'm not settling for that. And, you know, letting that arise and going, okay, I'm packing it for what it needs to be unpacked, but just still choosing that pathway of, freedom and abundance whatever that it means for you and what your purpose is yeah. yeah totally good point I think a lot of people can get caught in that that illusion of feeling like when I get to this place there'll be no more fear and worry mm-hmm. you know and that's why I wanted to talk about this evolution of letting things go and the evolution to see inside a business that's scaling out you know f- from that to from six figures to multiple six figures and that it's your ability to to I don't even think manage is the right word. It's the acceptance piece. Cause I, mm. I feel like manage is still very much like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not acceptance feels so much better for me. It's the acceptance that this is a journey. This yes. is part of it. And that we are ultimately okay. No matter what's happening it's happening for us to teach us things, to help us be better leaders and invariably help our customers, help our family, help our communities. Yeah, absolutely. It's always evolving. Yeah. Just keep following those breadcrumbs. Yeah. So those listening or cake crumbs, you know, I like to say, cake crumbs. <laughs> okay. I like cake. If anyone had noticed, <laughs> feel free to send me cake. Um, the evolution, you know, cause one of the key parts, I guess, of scaling a business is having other people come in and help you because when you start out, everyone can remember what that's like. You're doing everything. Yes. You're building the landing pages, you're creating the marketing, you're, editing all your videos, you're learning the Facebook ads, you're coaching learning how clients. to sell, you're coaching <laughs> the clients or you're delivering the service to the clients or creating the product or whatever it is that you do. It doesn't really matter, you know, the model or the industry that you're in. It's all pretty much the same. We sort of start out with this concept. Maybe we're sort of good at something and we go, I'm going to go into business and we start doing everything. And you, get, you think you get to a certain point where you obviously realize you cannot do everything on your own, especially if your mum, you finally realize that that, that, kind of is not going to work yes for that's you burnout or otherwise burnout. <laughs> you know what was the first thing that you started to let go of the first thing that I let go of was helping women get started so that's the sales component and I was really good at sales I was a membership coordinator in gyms I'm really good at it however it was taking away from my zone of genius and what was my important to keep growing and to keep serving more women in fitness so that was my first thing that I outsourced yeah was it challenging hell yes <laughs> I think that was the first thing that was the first really big thing like I will say like the caveat underneath that is that you were like there was some little bits and pieces that maybe yeah. now for where you sit it almost seems like oh that's not even that obvious anymore but things like but you know, someone doing some of your social media or yeah. like doing some of your sort of minor tweaks and design and stuff that and automations and things like that. But I still remember the day that you called me with this. Um, you know, I've got to, I've got to get this off my plate. And for most people who come to me initially to say, I just want to get rid of sales. I, I do do a, a, a sequence of questioning around this because my take on a lot of the times when people want to get rid of sales, if they're coming from a place of where they want to run away, and they just want to get that off because they don't like selling. And invariably they've got mindset around selling mindset blocks. I should say I've seen it thousands and thousands of times. It just does not end well. So I think that's a, it's a really important part to just preface here. There's, there's very few people that I would say have come across my path yet that are completely like, yeah, you can totally let go of it. They could probably be ready to let go of it if they were prepared to actually invest in looking at their sales process and tweak that for a quarter and then look at the outsourcing. But so many people come and their sales process is a mess or non-existent. Mm-hmm. And they almost, it's like, it's not, um, you know, actually getting someone in and delegating. It's almost like uh, dropping it into someone else's lap and hoping that they might fix it for you, which never really ends very well, does it? That's correct. Yes. It was a case of, we have so many people to chat to. It was taking away from the growth of the business. And And you had, yeah, you had a very clear um, strategy for, you know, how, how you talk to people and what needed to happen. And because I, I was actually for full transparency, I was very much involved. I actually trained Kelly's, you know, first sales team to be, um, you know, taking those calls and speaking to her amazing prospects who are amazing women, like the, the women that apply for your totally. programs, I think is just a testament to 
the work that you put in and your front end marketing and the education that you just give away for free so that you can help the marketplace, which I think is a key part of uh, attracting great people then into your prospect pipeline, so Mm -hmm. to speak. And so we set uh, Kelly up with a really great process, but it was your ability to truly just step away from that and trust that you'd done enough with your process up until that point and the work that you'd done with your marketing to then actually let your team step in. But was there any blips? Was there any feelings? Because, I mean, we obviously created training videos so that you can continue to scale if more people come in. We've done all of that for you. But was there any any blips where you kind of went, "Uh uh-oh, I don't know? Totally, yeah. Absolutely. It was like, oh, my God, this is my baby. And letting that go was huge. Mm. Like, you know, you have your moments of no one is as good as that is doing that as I am because it's my business. I know it inside and out and to let that go, you know, I did have to reframe lots of those so-called beliefs and, you know, with your guidance obviously is help me step into the role of my zone of genius, which was huge. It was huge, huge. you know, and it's, you know, it wasn't something that was just one conversation and it just literally turned around. It was, you know, I had to do a little bit of work on Absolutely. that to really step out of that. But Oh, huge relief. Huge relief. That's <laughs> when right. I did and it, I, it was fabulous. I was like, yes. You know, oh, and totally. Thing into that, not just for the team, but also for me and, you know, working out boundaries and what's going on and setting up processes around that. But best thing ever. Yeah. It gives you the support that you need to totally. do. Totally. So, yes. And I think, I mean, would be fair to say that happened about a year ago now. Yeah. Would be. Yeah. And like the impact that that's had since then since then it's just opened up so many different levels yeah Yeah. because it gives you the space obviously to and you know no brainer to do what you need to do and to be in your your zone of genius what do you love to do what do you what do you feel is your zone of genius where what makes you in flow in business what i love is the transformation with my clients so helping them because when you're in business you don't generally get to see what's holding you back and what steps you need to implement to transform and so I can see that straight away because you know just been doing it for so long it's just a no-brainer for me so diving in and doing that is number one and helping people through their blocks and unconscious patterns and just changing all of their beliefs and how they look at life and business and then creating content like I love that like really Mm -hmm. help inspire so many women to look at it a different way you know the fitness people can start to just to think that it can be just be a hobby you know I'll just do it on the side you know while kids are growing up but there's so much more to it and it just allows, you know, when I scroll through social media and I see my clients on holidays and doing things with their kids, that's what lights me up. I think there's not a day or a week that goes by where I don't get some message of someone saying, look what you've helped me create and look how this has changed my world. So that content and that client interaction, that's my zone of genius. Everything else now gets outsourced. So from that sales process, it it opened a, a can of worms. So, you know, that was the first part and it's like, huh, this is awesome. I have so much time. And because I could focus on those sorts of things, business started to grow. So it's like, what else now? So then we implemented a design team and a tech team and what else? So we've kept growing from that aspect. Which is such a good question. I mean, that is one of the pivotal questions in Sassy CEO planning. It's like, what else? Or what if, you know, how do we, it's like, ask a better question. Mm -hmm. You don't like the answer you're getting, ask a better question. It's like, ask a higher frequency question to get a better answer. And someone asked me the other day, you know, what would be your ideal day? And I said, I literally said, (laughs) I'm living it. Yeah. I am actually living that right now. And that's through those processes and sticking in that zone of genius and outsourcing all the things that, you know, tech stuff can be confusing and, you know, Facebook ads management, that's confusing in itself. Mm. So to have Because to you, to you, I mean, for some people, it'd be like, that totally totally makes sense. Totally. And that's okay. But that's, you know, you coming into acceptance and going, even though I could go watch 200 hours oh, of that latest different. Facebook course, yeah. that takes me away from my joy. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And I think the biggest, one of the biggest ahas I had um, in my business is realizing where, where my genius was and my joy and actually accepting that and allowing myself because we have been brought up in a society where there's almost this badge of honor to feel busy all the time and yes. to be very, cons- it's like that lack again. You know, we're, a la- we're lacking time. 
So, you know, we've got to like push as much in as possible and we're going to push our businesses and hustle and work hard it's to make money, <laughs> work really hard to make money or oh, our favorite ones, you know, and, and it's like this concept of like, I, I wake up and I'm like, How, wow, I've got this space and mm-hmm. I've got space to create and I've got space to learn and download what I what I want to um, say next. I mean, because that's obviously part of that's what I, I enjoy to do. Yes. It can feel very strange. I, I still remember having conversations when you first felt the real benefits and it was like this aftermath, like the, the aftermath of, oh my goodness, the sales team's working. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> the leads are getting um, converted and the right people are, being welcomed into the program and the ones that aren't are getting, you know, taken or, you know, sent in a direction that would help them because it's a very heart centered sales process that we implemented to help all that came to us. Totally. I still remember you kind of going, <laughs> Oh, it's very quiet. Yeah, what? Like what? <laughs> it always feels a little bit weird. And, it, and I really have to commend you there because I think one of the things Kelly said that we we shouldn't forget because she makes it seem so easy is the work so there's it's not like there's no work to be done it's like the work that needs to be done is done on herself yes you know and that that awareness work and the ability to really just be observant of like what is going on because it's so easy at that point I can't tell you the amount of times it's like a cycle I've done it myself. Yes. Feeding clients where you create the space, you create the systems, things are working. They've got the space now to really be in their genius and they go and break something or add something else in that's really unnecessary just to start going back into busy frequency because that's what we're used to. That's the belief. That's, yeah. that's where you've got to be right in order mm-hmm. to be successful and anything yes. else is not quite right. Mm-hmm. And something that I was, that's been a really aha moment was knowing that when I, and like I still continue to go through different levels of, of journeys, knowing that those fears and those voices and that, you know, the little pokes aren't the truth because our truth is that we are unlimited we are abundant. So when we stand in our power, it's just like a little test to see how congruent we are and how strong energetically we are to go to that next level. So I now know that those voices and those doubts aren't the truth. And so I just completely discard it and I still choose to remain in my power, knowing that nothing or no one can take that from me and just still choose to follow that path. So I think the real key here to pick up for anyone that's listening in what Kelly is saying is she chooses, is an operative word, to remain in her power. And I know a lot of women have said, well, Paula, how do I, how do I choose power? How do I, and it's such a, a, an interesting question because it's the answers within the question. We already (laughs) said about it. It's the choice. It's the choice to, to completely unravel and decide that, you know, there's too much competition and that everything, all the external forces are outside of us and we can no longer have any choice here, choice being the operative word to decide what will be the outcome. And I think when you finally realize it it can be a lot to take initially that you are truly responsible for everything. When you take that, that responsibility for everything, Mm -hmm. it's almost like you set yourself free. You do. And it's creating standards within your own business, your own personal life, whatever it is for you. And those standards really helps step you into that power. That's been huge. Speaking your truth and not holding back. Totally. Because, you know, to to let someone else feel better or whatever it happens to be. And you know, it's not a nasty thing. It's just really standing and holding your own. And so yeah, I just I, I think that's a really big point because, you know, like we mentioned that fear and worry and anxiety and doubt is really huge for for women in business. And it doesn't go, but you can take control of whether you let that affect you or not. And I just choose not to. And it, that's been a big game changer to really energetically hold that level because when you can do that, you can stand those challenges. You really then shift quite quickly to that next level. Totally. I love it. So we've spoken a little bit about the work. We said to say, whether you don't yeah, have work. to do it, you know, the work is on you, you know, and I know I can almost see there's a few eye rolling going on as they're listening 
Um, so let's, let's join the dots here a little bit for you, because I'm sure a few people are interested. I know I'd love to know what the latest routine is for mm-hmm. you, because you you know, you're living your perfect life. You've, you've got your routine. I know down pat, what's a, a day in the life of Kelly Sanders like in terms of, you know, when you're getting up, what you're doing, what are the tweaks that you've made to what you do day to day that help you do the work? So for me, it's waking up and getting kids ready for school. <laughs> Reality check as a mom. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So doing that. Or getting- supporting them. I know your kids supporting yeah, them. That is they, true. they are amazing children and yes. they do not need their mum to get them dressed. Let's just be clear no, here. That is true. They're awesome kids. They're, um, them, they are they? very much supported <laughs> by a very magical mother. Yes. Yes. So they are guided. Um, so we're out of the house. They've got, they catch a bus to school. So seven o'clock is um, out the door and go time. And so when I get back from that, it's just, huh, you know, doing the mum thing, you know, I may need to put a load of washing on or, you know, take the guinea pigs outside and, you know, and then it's having breakfast and just that moment of just a little bit of peace, just to refocus, regather myself. I'm someone who needs some time. So I'm a complete introvert, <laughs> strangely enough. And that time is really huge. So, you know, shower, and then it's into journaling, And just making sure that that part of my day is set up correctly. So, you know, setting intentions, goals, what needs to be tweaked. And I think the really biggest part of this is not buying into the hustle. It's actually checking in what's my focus, what are my intentions, but listening to intuition on what action should be taken next. Not what I have to do, but it's being inspired action. So from that place of next level, what's the inspired action around that? What do I feel called to do? And that's the place I take action from. So I write that down and then I go to the gym. So I make sure I do that, whether it be yoga or weight session. I feel that is a huge component to how I feel physically. Totally. Um, so once that's done in the morning, it's back, back into the office and calls or con- content is every single day. Um, checking with the team, admin, um, design team, tech team, Facebook team, you know, it's making sure that all those pieces are put together and just really focusing on content and clients. And a couple of hours goes, I may have a chat to you, yes. um, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> then it's uh, kid time. They're all back to ready to, to come back home. And then I, I switch into mum and there's no more than answering Facebook messages or diving into work. When they're home, that's it. Um, so is that your anchor? Like, is there anything else that you do to kind of create boundaries for yourself or do you just find the moment the children are back in the house it's like it's enough for you to kind of go done yeah done yeah totally so even before I go and pick them up from the bus because they get back about 4 4 30 it's you know it's that time just to regather myself so you know this is where I go with flow and intuition you know what do I feel I need right now if I feel I need a little bit more inspiration or grounding or you know just really checking in what do I need right now before I go and grab them? So maybe something like, an, you know, I've got an acupressure mat or, you know, walk outside and just sit in the sun or, you know, conversation with you or someone. Yeah, it's just, just really listening and, and tuning into what I need. It's so amazing because I think as women, we've been brought up to put everyone else ahead of ourselves. You know, part of, I've learned, you know, this archetype of mother you know, he's very selfless and again, sacrificing everything for the love of children and everything, all that jazz. Which I've um, done. <laughs> which we, you've done. Yeah. Um, I mean, now obviously my child and your children are, are different age brackets, but this concept you can hear, there's, a, there's so much care being taken in, in you and in, you know, what you need. And I, I just find it so refreshing because I know if someone had said that, maybe even 10, 15 years ago, I would have probably gone, God, you know, that's a bit selfish. You know, I can still remember in my evolution of personal development when I first said to, I think, someone in my family, I was like, oh, that doesn't really work for me, so I'm not going to take that on board or something like that. And they were like, that's very selfish of you. Mm. And it's so easy to sort of fall back into those patterns and I guess that's sort of like a, a mindset thing. But I'm also going to add this in because I think it's such an important component. You know, I've got women who push back on this all the time and go, oh, but I've got team. Oh, but, you know, great. 
you should have team. You shouldn't be doing it on your own. It's even more important for you to make sure that you're looking after yourself oh, because you're goodness. leading people now and you're responsible for them and what it's like to work for you. Um, I know I've got clients or I've got my this or I've got that and it's that choice piece it again. Is. Yeah. And it's the, there's something quite magical that happens when you finally say, what do I need? Because it's the first question I feel to, to really connect in with your intuition. And there are actual studies that show that CEOs that, that are actually more intuitive, they sort of like an in, a higher intuitive score, run more profitable businesses. Yes. So it's, this is, there's more studies coming about, out about this. You know, I'm doing other episodes about flow states and intuition. So, you know, it's, it's there. There's studies like big companies, are, you know, doing lots of really interesting things to find their next leaders because they're looking for more than just can someone balance books or manage humans. Yeah. Um, you know, so, but there's, there's something very, very special in the, the, the message of actually looking after yourself. You know, one of the taglines is a sassy CEO, you are the most important product. Totally. It all starts with you. Your business isn't you. I'm not meaning that you've got to like make sure you're okay because you're everything that's not scaling a business, but you're creating it. This is your movie. So if you're not actually making that space, whatever that means for you, to totally. tell it's like the journaling and um, having quiet time in the breakfast. But I think there's so much to be said for a routine, not necessarily yeah. a morning routine either. Yeah. I've had a lot of people get really stuck on that going, but I'm not a morning person. And neither am I. <laughs> But whatever you are, it's almost yeah. like just start where you are and just implement something that creates space for you. Yeah. And Don't that you makes you feel good. Like yeah. There's no right or wrong with this. You've got to have a play. And there's so many different tools, which I've learned. You'd probably name the program and tool. I would have it. But it's experimenting and, and feeling what good, you know, what do you feel you need at the time? But I just know that if I'm not looking after myself, then it affects, you know, how I interact with the family and, and how I feel about business. So you, you're spot on. It's, it's the most important part. And I see it I, in my I team. I that. can see it in my team. I can see it in my clients and I can see it in my team. If I'm feeling pushed, um, if I'm not doing the things that light me up um, or give me that connection time, it's almost like mirrors. I start to yeah. see little cracks in totally. um, the way maybe a team member responds to something or, um, you know, I can see a, a similarity in a client. It's just so interesting how the mirrors come up and it's always just a really great reminder for me to go, oh, here's my opportunity to take responsibility in the choices that I make right now. How am I co-creating in this moment? Yes. And what is it within me that needs some extra love right now? Mm-hmm. 100%. So good. Because it's like a giving and receiving cycle. Like the more you give to yourself, the more you open up to receive. But when mm. you totally block yourself up to receiving, well, then how can you expect then to receive it from a, a business level if you're not giving to yourself? So it yeah, really who's relates gonna, who's gonna pay, to Who's going to pay your business That's if it. you won't be open up to receiving That's anything? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Beautiful. Exactly. So mm. good. So good. So this has been amazing. I think we're going to have to As come always. back and do this again. <laughs> I say this to all my guests because I obviously very um, careful in the guest selection for Sassy CEO. I want really awesome women and I want it to be about an extended conversation because the whole point of this is to raise the frequency of conversation that is happening, not only for women in business, but in business in general, because we have got really important tasks and missions here that impact not only ourselves and our family but our communities and the world and it's it's about coming together and asking better questions and having better conversations that are just infused with love which I always get from you Cal I'm so so grateful for what you've shared today I hope the listeners can take some of your routine and just take some of that amazing attitude and the way that you can reframe things back out into their business um, so that they can start to apply that to expand out just like you have. Love it. Thank you, Paula. It's been Thank wonderful. You. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. I will be catching you, I guess, on, a, on an episode soon. You will. Thanks, Thanks honey. <laughs>